Let's start with the big news about James Madison. We know Newcastle United like James Madison. We know how their transfer strategy works when they like someone, when they've scouted someone, which they do thoroughly, until they are told a firm no, until that player joins another team. They're always likely to go back in for them. We've seen it with Botman. We've seen it with the tech And now we're seeing it with James Madison. He does split opinion. But what is your latest understanding on Newcastle's interest in James Madison? Yeah, the, the, the Chronicle put a story up this morning um, in which he reported that, you know, all the talk among, um, you know, Madison's people is that an exit is is approaching. Newcastle obviously still very much in the mix. Tottenham like him, Ange Postacoglio, the new manager, um, really likes him. Leicester, though, really do not want to um, sell on the cheap. They're still going to look to get top, uh, top dollar for him. Um, and he's also got a clause in his contract that means that Norwich get a 15% uh, sell-on fee for whatever fee that they get. Newcastle, though, are still very keen. And as you said, they often go back in for targets until they're told it's a firm no. Um, and as far as we're aware, Madison's leaving it with his people at the minute while he's on international duty before making his decision later in the month. And why do you think they like him so much? How does he fit into to this squad? A lot of people struggle to see which position he fits in. There's no doubt in his quality, but Eddie Howe has been very rigid in the formation he's used. We know the type of player he likes. And the other criticism of him from, from some is whether he has that ability, work rate, for want of a better phrase in many ways, but the work rate to sustain what Eddie Howe likes in his team, which is a high-pressing team. Don't give the opposition a moment on the ball and you press them into making mistakes. Yeah, look, don't get me wrong. There's... there's... I don't want to say negative, but there's sort of drawbacks where you look at the deal and you think, well, yeah, as you've said there, where does he fit in? Eddie Howe likes this rigid 4-3-3 where really you don't play with a number 10, you don't play with an attacker. Uh, Madison's previously told Brendan Rodgers he didn't want to play out on the right or the left for Leicester, which is obviously a problem given that Eddie Howe doesn't want to change. The work rate thing, I'm not too sure. I think he was sort of in a luxury role at Leicester where he didn't have to do too much defensive work. He'll know coming in Newcastle, he certainly will. But look on the on the flip side, there's a lot of positives. You know, he was a you know, still got ten goals, ten assists in that you know struggling last team last year. England call up once again. You know, he feels like he's coming into his prime the next couple of years. There's a lot of reasons to like him. And I think you know there's a little bit of recency bias among certain you know sections of the fan base because I think if you'd asked the question twelve months ago, do you want to sign James Madison? Ninety five percent of them would have said yes. He's been in this lesser team that have struggled, they've gone down, and I think now the has the has the atmosphere maybe soured on them a little bit. It would take a formation changer, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Or or yeah, Madison has to play in a new role like Joe Willock, where he's maybe you know out on the right of the three or the left of the three. He's playing a lot more defensively. He's running a lot more. He's not as. But if you're spending the... that amount of money, because. It's going to cost a heck of a lot of money, even though they've been relegated. What what are we thinking? At least fifty million, probably. If you're spending that amount of money, are you spending that amount of money on a player to then shoehorn into a formation which doesn't suit them? I just, I just, for me, that just in my head doesn't work. It doesn't is it, fit. Is it shoehorning though? We're not we're not talking about a Joel Linton here, where you know he's a striker and he's been shoehorned into the midfield. We're talking about a James midfield, a James Madison, who is you know, a central midfielder. Yes, he plays a bit, little bit more attacking, but I don't think it's too much of an ask. You know, Joe Willock at Arsenal was very much an attacking midfielder who has now learned and already how, how to defend. And I think with James Madison, okay, it's not a like-for-like -like comparison, but I think I think Madison in that midfield three would work. Do you think the price will come down? I think it has to. I think at the minute, you know, you look at what Leicester have done already this summer. They've let Tielmans go. They've let Sionku go. They've let a lot of, you know, decent players for, go for free. They're going to want top dollar for Barnes. They're going to want top dollar for Madison. And I think, you know, Roger Cook said here in the chat, will they have a season of 45 million? I think Newcastle won't want to go any higher than that. Leicester are, you know, holding up for closer to 50. You're not going to get that. I think it eventually will come down the longer the window goes on. I could see it being done at, 30, 35, 40 maybe in staggered payments. Um, but Leicester will certainly hold out for as much money as they can. And it also comes down to where Madison wants to move to. We know Spurs are very interested in him. But of course, Newcastle can offer him Champions League football. But does he like the bright lights of London? Yeah. Um, obviously, we know how great it is to, to live and work in Newcastle. But you know some players don't want to move up to, to Newcastle. 
where do you think his head is at at the moment? Obviously, he's on international duty, isn't he? Um, will Trippier and, and Wilson be having a little word in the air, do you think? We saw it with Nick Pope last summer, didn't we, on, on international duty over the summer where Trippier and Callum Wilson were sort of playing the player agent role um, over there. I think it'll be exactly the same. Madison's obviously already spoke about having them guys in his ear uh, you know, over the World Cup time. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because as you say, the pull of London is still great. It's probably not as great as it once was, especially after the takeover. But if you are, I mean, look, this is just a personal opinion. And maybe I'm a little bit biased. Maybe I've got the, the black and white spectacles on. But Tottenham are a club in a mess. They haven't got European football. They were awful last season. They're getting rid of top quality managers who can't get a tune out of them. James Madison's just been up at Tyneside a couple of weeks ago. He's seen Newcastle United qualify for the Champions League in front of his own eyes. Brilliant more flags display, brilliant atmosphere. What more could you want, really? I think it's a no-brainer for a player. Yeah, we were saying off-air about Spurs and about Chelsea and how we don't necessarily think it's, it, much is going to change next season because of the way the, the state the clubs find themselves in and signing James Madison is not going to be the, the remedy for Spurs if Harry Kane goes as well. I mean, that he's probably going to want reassurances on that as well. You know, if I move to Spurs, will Harry Kane be be still the man I'll be supplying uh, the passes to? Whereas here at Newcastle, you know, it's going to take something special for any club to tempt Bruno away. We know Newcastle have got a very, very strong hands-off policy. Uh, the same with Wilson and Isaac. You know, you know the quality players that performed last season are going to be here this summer, this season, and, and you're joining a team on the up. It's it, well, you've just taken the words right out of my mouth. It is a club on the up, and um, I think being on national duty with Kieran Trippier this week is the perfect example. He joined the club. I mean, when they weren't even on the up, when they were just sort of starting to take off. And look how that's, you know, worked for him in terms of him already being a fan favourite after 18 months. For Madison, he's not getting on the ground level, but he's getting in, you know, quite early on when the club have just reached the Champions League. The, the possibilities are endless. He will be the first of many top additions in the summer. And I just think you can't really say anything any of that about Tottenham. Um, but ultimately, it, it, as you say, it just depends on what the player wants. Would you take him? Yeah, look, I, I know I've just spoke there about sort of the atmosphere maybe souring a bit and maybe I think it has for myself as well. I think there's other options out there. As we, we spoke last week at length about, you know, if it's between Madison and Soberslai, I think I would like to go for Soberslai, even to a little bit more money. Um, I get the point about the position. I get the point of maybe about the attitude. But for me, I just think on his day, he's so good. He's dragged that Leicester team, you know, up the table for years until this season. I wouldn't be against it. I equally wouldn't be too disappointed if it didn't happen. Yeah, for me, if it doesn't happen, I'm not going to be too disappointed. But for the fact that we know Newcastle United like him, so I think you, you trust the process, you trust their judgment, they've done their homework. And if it's good enough for Newcastle United, it's good enough for, for me as a fan, you know, to, to want James Madison. You know, if it was me, I think there are other options out there, and especially for the price tag. The price tag is going to be so crucial here because someone's uh, asked, I think it's Billy. He's, he's talking about reports about how much Newcastle United will have to spend this summer. And it's, it's anything from 75 million up to 150, isn't it? That's where, you know, people are putting the levels at. You know, if he's costing, regardless of where the level, the, the meter ends, lands in that in that range of 75 to 150, Madison's going to cost a huge amount, amount of money and he's going to cost a huge chunk of that, isn't he? It depends whether Eddie Howe ultimately was telling the truth when we asked him towards the end of the season. Do you want two or three players that you know blow your budget, and but they're going to really, really improve the first team, or do you want to spread that money out? And Eddie Howe, you know, seems to want to buy elite players that are going to instantly improve this team. He'll know the level they need to get that next season, and I think Madison brings that. So, on the flip side, I know it would cost a lot of money, but if Eddie Howe thinks that the way to do it is, you know, three forty million pound signings, then you know maybe it's the way to go.